Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. I'd like to start off by saying that the University of Alberta acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and respects the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. I would now like to introduce Colleen Lindholm, the Rural Community Consultant with Rural Health Professions Action Plan, who has organized tonight's event. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us on this uh, lovely evening. I'm so happy to see you all here and thanks for taking some time out of your day to spend with us. I'm really excited about this event and um, you're going to hear lots of great information tonight. So get ready. So I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about RPAP. Um, and so just on the first slide here, so who is RPAP? We are the Alberta Rural Health Professions Action Plan. We have been around for quite a long time and we're actually celebrating our 30th birthday this year. So what do we do? A few of the pieces, um, a few of the pieces of our organization include working alongside rural communities across the province, supporting them with tools and resources to attract and retain health professionals. We also provide support to practicing physicians and health professionals across the province, offering various education and professional development opportunities for them to build on their existing skills. Within the RPAP team, we have seven community rural community consultants who work and live across the entire province, supporting over 150 communities with their attraction and retention efforts. Many communities have A&R committees who work on making sure that health professionals in their area are supported. This could look like a number of different activities, such as welcoming and integrating a new physician and their family into the community, holding a community-wide appreciation for local healthcare professionals, pre and post COVID hosting a post-secondary skills weekend where medical, nursing and other university and college health students come to the community for a weekend, experiencing what it would be like to work, live and play there. These are really popular events. Another popular event are our Let's Go Rural High School Skills event. This is a full day experience where students like yourselves experience hands-on medical skills such as suturing, IV starts and injections alongside a local health professional who shares their story of how they got to where they are in their career and why they work, live and play in a rural community. While these events are not able to happen right now due to COVID, we do anticipate that they will be happening again at some point in the future. But in the meantime, we are really excited to be offering events such as this, a virtual Let's Go Rural event. So this is a new venture for us and we are so pleased and grateful to be working with the University of Alberta Faculty of Nursing to make this happen. If you do wanna learn more about RPAP, as there is a whole lot more, check us out on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Flickr. Just on side note, I am going to be emailing all of the participants and evaluation after the event is over. We really do appreciate you taking a few minutes to fill it out so we can know how to plan for future events like this. Plus, you can enter into a draw for a $50 Visa gift card. There will be two draws. Also in that survey will be an opportunity for you to leave your email address with us if you would like to hear more from us about our future events and even being connected to the a &R committee in your area. Many of them would absolutely love to connect with you to see how they can support you as you start your own pathway in becoming a health professional. And last but not least, this event is being held as part of our Alberta Rural Health Week celebrations. May 24th to the 28th is a big week for RPAP and all the rural communities that we work with. Lots of appreciation is being showcased across the province for rural health care providers and the volunteers who work hard to keep health care close to home. Keep your eyes open on social media for the hashtag Rural Health Matters. Now enough from me. I know that there's lots of other great speakers you want to listen to. Thanks again for joining us tonight. My name is Doreen Deco and I'm the undergraduate student advisor for the Faculty of Nursing with the University of Alberta. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about how you can get into our program, the admission requirements, the CASPER test, um, and answer any questions you might have about our program. 
Well, we're going to talk about the University of Alberta's program. Um, if this program is not for you, please know there are a number of other nursing programs offered in the province of Alberta. And if being an RN is not your direction, there are RPN and LPN programs available at other institutions in Edmonton as well. Um, but as our program is the only one I can really speak to regarding admission, this is the one I'll be focusing on. The Faculty of Nursing uses an intentional clinical learning model in all of our programs. This means students will first learn about clinical concepts in the classroom, practice them in a lab setting, and then they'll apply and implement specific nursing skills with patients in clinical settings. This integrated approach is intended to help students retain more of what they've learned by integrating all three steps into one term. Faculty members also utilize purposeful guidance to help students make sense of care environments. This deliberate practice is shown to increase skill mastery and confidence. The intentional clinical learning model runs throughout our whole program. So in addition to having skills integrated in each individual course, the overall program itself builds on everything that came before it. The University of Alberta offers direct high school admission to the collaborative program and the bilingual program within our faculty. The collaborative program is a four-year program that can be completed at the University of Alberta or one of our off-campus partner institutions. The off-campus collaborative programs can be taken at Grand Prairie Regional College, Keanu College in Fort McMurray, or Red Deer College. If you're interested in one of the off-campus programs, um, you will want to contact the institution directly um, as students start there. And after three years at that institution, they transfer to the U of A um, and continue taking their fourth year courses as a U of A student, but at the institution where they started. So if you were to have started at Grand Prairie, Grand Prairie Community College, you would do your first three years at Grand Prairie. You would transfer to the University of Alberta and become a University of Alberta student, but you would be taking our courses at Grand Prairie Regional College. So you would take your whole program there. It would just be a paper difference on where you, you came from. Um, you would graduate with a Bachelor of Nursing degree from the University of Alberta. For students wanting to apply to the collaborative program at the University of Alberta, the admission requirements are English Language Arts 30-1, one of the following subjects, um, Fine Arts, Humanities, Languages Other Than English, Physical Education, or Math and Sciences. For each of these particular subjects, there are multiple courses that could meet them. Um, so you should be able to find out what will meet those specific requirements on the University of Alberta Undergraduate Admissions website. You will also need to present Biology 30, one of Science 30 or Chemistry 30, one of Mathematics 30-1, Mathematics 30-2, or Mathematics 31. Please note only one Mathematics 30-1 or Mathematics 30-2 can be used for admission. And the spoken English language proficiency is also required for this program. Again, the Faculty of Nursing also offers the bilingual program. Graduates from this program will complete clinical requirements on French speaking units where possible and will be able to provide care in both official languages upon certification to the profession. For students wanting to apply to the bilingual program at the University of Alberta, the admission requirements are English language 30-1, one of Francais 30-1, Francais 30-2, French 30-9Y, French 31, French Language Arts 30-1, French Language Arts 30-2, and Biology 30, one of Science 30 or Chem 30, one of Mathematics 30-1, Mathematics 30-2, or Mathematics 31. Again, only one of Mathematics 30-1 or 30-2 can be used for admission. Proficiency in both French and English is a requirement for the bilingual program. I know that was a lot of courses I just went over, and if you don't remember them, that's okay. These are all available on our calendar, um, or if you have any questions, there'll be an email address at the end of this presentation that you can always email. For both the collaborative and the bilingual program, students will also need to complete a situational judgment test or a CASPER test to be considered for admission to our program. Once the CASPER test has been completed, students will need to ensure that the results are submitted to the University of Alberta. The CASPER test score works as a threshold for admission purposes. The registrar's office will review all CASPER scores that are submitted, and if the minimum score has been met, your application will then be evaluated or sent to our office for evaluation. If your CASPER score does not meet the threshold, your application will be denied at that time, and you will be notified of that. 
In addition to the minimum score on the CASPER test, students must also present a competitive admission GPA to be considered for admission to our programs. I know you're all wondering what the competitive admission GPA is. Unfortunately, I am not able to give you that as the competitive average for the program changes from year to year and is dependent on our pool of applicants for the collaborative and bilingual programs. What I can tell you is that at least 73% of students admitted to the Faculty of Nursing for fall 2018 had admission averages in the 90s. Again, I hope this information helps and we'll hopefully have time for questions at the end of this presentation. And if you have any questions about admission requirements, please don't hesitate to ask those at that time. We now have some current and previous students who would like to take a minute to talk to you about their experience in the program. We have with us today, Bailey Artin, Brianna Raphael, and Lydia Matoni. My name is Bailey and I am a second year after degree student um, as was mentioned before, there's the two, two intakes that come into that physical U of A campus. So there's the collaborative and then the after degree. So what that means is that on top of the BSN that I will get in my two years, I had to have a previous degree to get into the U of A after degree. So my previous degree, get ready, um, was in Bachelor of Arts. Um, I actually have a degree in Spanish and political science. So I know that's um, a completely 180 situation from a lot of my friends who are in the program. Um, a lot of my friends have immunology degrees, biology degrees, and that has definitely helped them, but there's a lot of good things that have come from my degree as well. Um, so before this presentation, we were given a list of questions um, to just help us guide, guide our presentations. Um, so the first one was, what would you tell your old high school self now? Um, so when I was 18, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. And I feel like that's okay. And I feel like someone would have been there to tell me that's okay if you don't know what you want to do. Because I, looking back now, am like 18 is still considered a teenager to me. Like that's a huge life decision to make when you're 18 to decide what career you want for the rest of your life. So I would say to just be kind to myself and that it's okay to not know what you want to do. And um, I was in the position where Thankfully, gratefully, my parents were able to help me out financially um, for my undergrad. However, it was under the circumstances that I went right into school after I graduated high school. So if I would have known or would have told myself that now, I would have said take a year off instead of wasting my parents' money on education if I actually had no direction what I wanted to do. But if you want to go into nursing, it's, it's an incredible career path. I can tell you that right now. There's so many different directions to go in. Um, so the next question is, what courses did you take in high school? Um, I think that was a long time ago. I think I took math. I think I was in honors math, bio, and chem. I did not take physics. Um, I kind of wish I did, though, just because knowledge is power. But that's besides the point. I really like bio. So I think that went into my interest right now. What courses do you wish you took? Um, I'm going to direct this question to university courses because after my degree in Bachelor of Arts, I actually had to go take courses that were the prerequisites to get into nursing. Um, so those courses I took were physiology, anatomy, um, I think there were stats in there too, but also I took um, in a uh, 400 level immunology class out of interest, which apparently is really weird to take as an open studies class. But I actually met some people who I'm friends with nursing now who are in that class who also got into nursing. So we've been friends for a really long time. Um, so just take courses that are relevant, but also interest you because obviously immunology is very relevant to nursing. Um, did I volunteer? Um, prior to university, I did dabble in volunteering, um, but not that much. Um, in nursing itself, I, I'm 
well, I guess I was the second year after degree rep for my U of A class. So that our schedules are so busy, but I found that there was enough time to attend meetings and then relay information from the faculty back to my graduate cohort. Um, and, but as for that, not really much volunteering just because I have been paying for this degree by myself. So I've been more work oriented in that sense. And why nursing is always a question that you'll probably get going into school. Um, I was actually living in Spain at the time where I decided to go into nursing. And I really just, and also, I should also mention that when I was graduating high school, nursing was on my mind, but not, I don't know why I didn't apply for it. But anyways, besides, besides the point, but nursing is a great profession if you like working with your hands. So kinesthetic learning, the human connection is actually incredible that you can get from my experience in my clinicals. It's just insane how much people trust you and how much people open up to you. And it's really a sense of vulnerability that they just let you in and they trust you with their whole being. So when you're actually helping these patients, it's like you have this connection and I feel like you don't really get that in everyday life. So I think that the human connection piece is really important to me and has been really gratifying. Um, yeah, and sometimes people just want to be heard and, and one of the best opportunities is when um, for example, if you're a student at the bedside, you only have one or two patients and sometimes these people just want to talk to you. So I found that that's really re rewarding. And last but not least, why rural is that I actually grew up in a rural community in Devon. So Devon's just about 30 kilometers outside of Edmonton. And I find that there's a sense of community in rural areas and I just like going outside and, you know, seeing seeing some people at the same time over and over again at the grocery store saying hi. Um, I've heard that there's more responsibility in rural set, rural communities. So I'm just going into my preceptorship right now. So I'm about to see if that's true or not. I'm actually um, doing my preceptorship starting next week in Canmore Hospital, in the ER there. So very excited for that. And other than that, I just like the quiet lifestyle. So you still hear sirens and everything out here, but just not as much as in the cities, so. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Brianna Raffel. Um, I am also a student in the after degree program. Um, and I also had some kind of nice prompts to work off of for my presentation for you guys. So first one was my journey to getting into nursing school as someone who grew up rural. So I am originally from Lac La Biche. Uh, it's about two and a half hours northeast of Edmonton. My nursing school story is a little bit different, just like Bailey's. Um, I took a little bit of a roundabout way to get to nursing. When I was in high school, um, I didn't have a strong understanding of what I wanted to do for a career yet. Um, I just generally knew that I wanted to work in some sort of health related field that I wanted to help people and create a positive change in the community. And there's tons of ways to do that, to kind of achieve that goal. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't get a lot of exposure to a lot of opportunities to look into healthcare jobs in high school. So I was definitely a little bit lost. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm really happy to see talks like this being made possible for rural students because that's um there's tons of opportunities out there for you guys that you just might not have been exposed to yet so for me i was still in the size of i ended up choosing a degree in kinesiology um i moved away from home at 17 from lac la biche moved to edmonton and i started my degree at the u of a um, and for those who aren't familiar kinesiology is a bachelor's degree um, it takes a multidisciplinary approach to human health and wellness it relates to exercise science, athletic performance, and promotion of long-term health outcomes. So it's a very general degree and it's focused on human health. And in this degree, um, I found I have a real interest for working with people with disabilities and other vulnerable populations. Um, I really enjoyed helping them achieve health and wellness, just general access to good healthcare, recreation, sport activities, and just inclusion in general. Um, I worked during that degree for a not-for-profit that created opportunities for people with disabilities in uh, outdoor recreation. 
And then once I graduated, I worked for the William Watts Lodge, which is a nature lodge tailored specifically for people with disabilities to be able to get outside and recreate in nature. And I credit this time and this work I did in helping me come to the realization that the way I wanted to kind of serve my community was to be an advocate and to create opportunities for vulnerable populations. But I also wanted to work more on the front lines of healthcare. I wanted to kind of be more hands on and in more of an acute healthcare setting like the hospital. So nursing was the correct option for me too. Um, so realizing this was my route and with my kinesiology degree, I also went through the after degree program. And I gotta say, it's, it's just like the four year program that you guys are probably looking at right now. It's just condensed into those two years with those prerequisites. Um, so yeah, I started in fall 2019 and I'm graduating this July, which is exciting. <laughs> and then um, the next one was things you're happy um, you fall through and also wish you would have known then, i.e. course selections, volunteering in the community and all that. So looking back, sometimes I wish I'd come to the realization that nursing was my path a little bit earlier, um, if you were straight to nursing, but I think my detour through kinesiology, um, it's what helped me grow into the person I am. It prepared me for nursing. I have a firm belief that education of any kind is meaningful and it rounds you out as a person. Um, it also gave me some really meaningful experience to draw from from my nursing practice. So specifically when I have patients with disabilities, um, when I'm doing patient education, kind of focusing around health and wellness, that sort of thing. So for you all where you are right now, I guess I'd highly recommend you take on opportunities right now in high school to shadow, volunteer in your communities, gain a stronger understanding of what the nursing profession is, um, kind of look at healthcare as a whole, because um, it can be a challenging field of work for sure, but it's also a really satisfying place where you get to make a meaningful change in people's lives, just like Bailey said. Um, so then during your degree, um, find ways to volunteer, become part of the university community, kind of search out opportunities to grow your skill set, and also find balance between, you know, that working hard, building your resume, also kind of take care of yourself, enjoy the university experience. It's it's a big degree, but it's very exciting and you can all excel and have a really great university experience with it. Um, and the next one was tips and advice for young people in rural Alberta considering applying into nursing school. So I guess rural specifically. Um, for most of you like me coming to university, you might have to move pretty far away from home and your family. For me, I moved at 17. I started a bit early and I think the most challenging thing was learning how to drive in the city. I thought that was pretty scary, but it's an intimidating transition, but it's also a really exciting time. Um, you get to find your own path, you get to meet new people, find opportunities that maybe aren't present in your hometowns. Um, my advice to you would be again, orientation. Orientation is usually those like two, three days before the semester starts on campus. Um, you get orientated to the campus, your courses, your new peers, just kind of general information that will help you succeed. And it kind of gives you confidence to start your first semester with. And what nursing means to me in rural nursing specifically. So for me, um, my introduction to rural nursing was my preceptorship. Um, I did mine just last semester. So towards the end of your degree in nursing, you complete a 350 hour clinical placement in a specific area of nursing is kind of like a fi finishing touch of your degree. Um, I chose to complete mine in a rural area um, because up until that point, my only experience were in the larger city center hospitals and the kind of city community health centers. And I wanted to kind of round out my clinical experience and see if rural nursing was for me. So I completed those 350 hours at the Bonneville Health Center, which is the main hospital for the Bonneville area. And my placement was on the first floor unit of this hospital. So this unit included medical and surgical patients, obstetric, gynecological patients, palliative care, pediatrics, we had some psych patients. Like this unit really had a little bit of everything. Um, it was a really good learning environment. I think that's quite common for rural nursing is you get a little bit of everything. And in the city placements, you're usually assigned to like one unit or area for school and that you, you see, might see more complex patients, but they're all gonna be very similar patients. And rural nursing really gave me the opportunity to broaden my horizons, see a bunch of different types of patients and 
my preceptor there was able to get me some really interesting experiences, like getting to observe surgery in the OR and working knee surgery and kind of go work at their cardiac stress test clinic. So just lots of really cool things to see. Um, for me, nursing means a way to kind of combine my values and ideals with my career. I like that my work positively impacts people. Um, I'm able to kind of advocate for those vulnerable populations more. And it's an extremely diverse uh, profession. Like you could be a nurse in a million different settings, like clinics, hospitals, research, lots of other things. And you can find your fit. You can move between specialties. You can kind of grow in your, in your profession. So it's a very interesting career that way. And rural nursing specifically is really important because one of the main tenets of the Canadian healthcare system is that there's universal access, which means even if you're not in those major cities, regardless of where you are, who you are, you should have access to good health care. And rural nurses play a really big role in making that possible, especially like kind of more in the remote rural areas. So um, rural nursing is also a really great way to kind of balance quality of life outside of work with your career. So personally, I really enjoy being outside. I like being close to nature, natural areas and cities can't really provide that. So with rural nursing, I can kind of excel my career and be happy outside of work at the same time. Um, so one kind of last note I'd like to leave with you guys with is that, especially for high school students at this point in your education, is that if for whatever reason you don't currently have the marks or the correct classes, or you're just not ready to apply yet, it's not the end of the world. Everyone has their own path and you can get to that place in nursing you want to be at your own pace. Things like upgrading courses exist um there's no age limit <laughs> there's no deadline and anything like that so i think i'm a good example that i didn't exactly take a traditional pathway but i'm still about to graduate with nursing and i'd recommend it for you guys too um so yeah best of luck to you all thank you for listening well my name is lydia i am not an academic student i am a collaborative student um and i finished my preceptorship in march and i graduated um at the beginning of this month um and i guess like mine is a little bit different because i'm not from a rural setting i'm actually from red deer which is in between calgary and edmonton um and i decided to move to edmonton when i was 17 because i just want to live in the big city i wanted to be um taking courses where there's 400 or 500 people and um being able to just participate in all the things that are uh, big city living. So it's kind of weird that I took a rural placement because I love the city. Um, but um, yeah, I went through the program and then I did a preceptorship in a little place called High Level. Um, when I went to High Level, I kind of got in. I was like, oh, it's gonna be 20,000 people. It was actually 3,000 people. And I've never lived in a place that has lower than 100,000 people and that was the scariest time for me um, but it turned into being such a great opportunity to just um, get to know people and like actually like see them more than once that was astounding um, and just learn more about a community and actually become part of a community um, things that I'm happy that I followed through with um, and that I wish that I knew with this whole experience is um, I really uh, appreciated being part of volunteering just like how Brianna mentioned it it's it's all about what you put in you have to actually get out there and try a lot of the things that the city has to offer you and a lot of it does come through volunteering and in nursing it's all about um, the health of that of the people around you and you can work with a lot of vulnerable populations but not in a health setting which allows you to just learn more about who is in your community so i found that to be really great i focused most of my stuff with people that were in harms reduction and then also people that were experiencing homelessness that's where my focus was with that and then i spent a lot of my time focusing on global health there's lots of courses that are offered at the university through the faculty of nursing that deal with global health but also in other programs where you get to just learn more about the macro structures that we're part of um, and that also aided me with going into these smaller communities and understanding how what they're experiencing is actually something so similar that is experienced in other communities as well um, so the tips and advice for young people 
in rural Alberta, considering about applying to nursing, I'd say being in this presentation is a great way to start. We didn't have this presentation when we started, so I would have liked to be told what was going on. So this is a really great opportunity. Um, and it's really nerve wracking with the picking process for even preceptorship in general, but I feel you'll get to the point in fourth, in, well, before your fourth year where they just give you the option to choose um, rural preceptorship or city preceptorship and everything is laid out to you so well. You learn about the small places in Alberta. I read through the list and some of the places I didn't know existed and I had to search up myself. Um, you just pick one and honestly, every community has so many great things to offer. I went very high north, but I had friends that were also in Bonneville and um, in Camrose and they really enjoyed it. There's so many cool things about these tiny hospitals that even our bigger hospitals can't get their hands on. Um, so what being, uh, sorry, what being a nurse means to me and what rural health means to me. Um, I've never thought about rural health ever. Like it's never been my thought process until my preceptorship um, in January. Um, the populations there are so unique to the area. Like mine, we were, um, had three reserves around. So I learned so much more about um, like FNMI um, health than I ever have just because of where I was placed. But then we also had farming communities around us and then um, people closer to the border that don't access health as much. And every single day it was like, I was reading another chapter of health again. And I consistently asked my preceptor um, about what's going on. And she was like, it's rural health. It's never going to amount to the things that we see in the city. The city, you see a very um, base population and every hospital you go to in Edmonton, you'll see somewhat of the same people, but in rural health, I've never met so many different people in the time span that I was given. Um, and then just being a nurse, I think it taught me just way more about being open and learning more from different types of people than I think I would have experienced in city nursing because everything's just so different. They use resources in a way that our city nurses can not imagine. And the sense of community that you have with your workers is so different. It, it was weird to show up and know everyone's name. I've never had that before. So it was quite interesting. Um, so, um, speaking of me loving the city, I am going back to my rural preceptorship after all these things are done. Um, I still love the city, but we got to see things that were cardiac events and labor and deliveries and surgeries and mental health. And when you work um, in other settings, you often have to choose your alignment, which is hard for someone like me. I like to see everything. Um, so practicing rurally, I feel like I get to see the holistic side of everything and understand more of where patients are coming from. Um, but since you guys are in high school, there's things that someone wish I told me, sorry, some, I cannot speak. Some things I wish someone told me while I was in high school. Um, grades matter, but they don't matter when you get into your program. Uh, Obviously, unless you're planning to apply to masters and other things above, they still matter. But um, nursing is a profession where you work with a lot of different people and no one knows what grades you got in any of the classes you took in high school. And that's the best part about it. Everyone is working on a team and people are there because they know that you have the skills to be on the team and they are there to listen and take your input. And then you are also there to do the exact same thing. And since you're on a team, it builds this sense of, I guess, like camaraderie. No one's here buying to take your place. They're there to work with you and help all of the people that you're working with. And so when someone brings something to the table, you are also hoping to bring something else. It's definitely a different feel than high school where everyone's kind of trying to get the best grades. Um, another thing is uh, having a work ethic. It's very um, odd to say, but universities 
grades are hard to get um, or just staying in programs is very hard to get and uh, to stay in. If you are missing the work ethic, I really hope you are working on gaining the work ethic because it's easy the first two weeks of school. Everything's fun. There's the beer gardens over there. There's all the volunteering groups you signed up for. But in week eight, when all the assignments are starting to get to you, um, the work ethic that you built in high school um, is the one that's going to get you through it. Um, and then, yeah, again, just teamwork. You just have to learn how to like people and work well with others because your team is who in the end helps your patients. Um, yeah, I, uh, what would I tell my older self? Um, I would say take as many courses as you can in high school because you guys are young, it is free. <laughs> Being in university, that is not an option. <laughs> if you think physics is fun, take that physics 30, take that APA physics. Um, because the university, you will be paying for a very expensive physics course that you might not be able to get into because you are not a physics major. So I would say take as many courses as you can, find what interests you because you're able to, and then you don't have to worry about trying to get that class later on. And I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Bailey, Brianna, and Lydia. I would now like to turn things over to Tammy Cernick, uh, Senior Advisor, Provincial Nursing Strategy, Talent Management, and Talent Acquisition with Alberta Health Services, to talk to us about whether there are rural opportunities after graduation. Thank you so much, Corinne. Good evening to everybody that's on the line with us. I just want to say thank you to RCAP and the University of Alberta for inviting Alberta Health Services in to chat with you as well, because we do have some pretty significant information that will help you think about not only what you want to do after high school, where you might want to be situated, um, if you choose a nursing career pathway, and what that might look like in preparation for that career as well. So let's talk about that. So in Alberta Health Services, of course, our Alberta Health Services spans the entire province of Alberta, and we have 28,000 or so registered nurses working within Alberta Health Services. That is a big volume of employees that are registered nurses. We have about 8,000 licensed practical nurses, and we employ about 900 registered psychiatric nurses as well. So we have just a little over 100,000 employees. So when you think about that registered nursing group, that's a significant number. Next slide. So as I mentioned, Alberta Health Services spans the entire province of Alberta. We deliver health services at every single one of those little black dots. So there's either a health service or some uh, supportive health facility, mental health, public health, home care, in all of those little black dots across the province. And as you can see, as we move up into the north zone of the province, it gets a little more rural and remote. But that's an area that we have incentives for nurses to go work in because not everybody puts up their hand to go work in rural remote areas. But one of the students even mentioned that they were in high level and what a fantastic experience that was. So working in rural areas is just um, something that I believe everybody should have an experience and, and go trial to see if it's an environment that is a good fit for you if you cho choose a health related career and if you choose nursing. Uh, our other rural areas are the south zone at the very bottom of the map that's in the brown section and then we have a large urban area in central zone and that's where I am from. I'm actually from Camrose. I too am a registered nurse and most of my nursing practice and my career has been in rural practice. So uh, it's near and dear to my heart. Next slide. When we talk about rural nursing, we talk about a generalist model. So the students that spoke this evening talked a little bit about the diversity of the po patient population that you'll be serving and caring for. And so as a rural nurse, we often think of that as a specialty unto itself because it's such a diverse practice. 
On top of that, you can receive additional training and specialization. And some of the areas that we have currently a need for more resources in is related to operating room uh, practice, critical care nursing, uh, mental health, and emergency room nursing, which often uh, draws new graduates into that area as well. And then oncology, because we deliver a lot of cancer care in rural Alberta as well. It used to be in the larger urban centers, but it's infiltrated throughout our rural, rural areas as well. And so that's an area that you can specialize in. So that just gives you an idea of beyond the, the basic uh, program that you would achieve your Bachelor of Science in Nursing, there is additional education that you can take thereafter. Let's talk about the next slide, which is the compensation for nurses. So right now, two things are really important. Registered nurses must be registered. That, that means they hold a practice permit with the College and Association of Registered Nurses of Alberta. That is a must have. You cannot practice without a registered nursing permit. So new graduates move to obtain that permit by writing a national exam after they finish their formal degree program. That exam is called the NCLEX exam and that same exam is written across the country. So that's a really um, key requirement to move into registered nursing practice. When you first graduate um, from your nursing program, you may obtain a provisional permit until you write that NCLEX exam. So again, all that is important as you move towards uh, your permit. When you come out as a new graduate nurse, you're going to be making a base salary of 34 39 per hour up to a maximum of 4201 per hour as soon as you become a registered nurse we bump that base salary rate of pay up to 3686 this rate of pay is current uh, based on the negotiation with the unionized um, collective agreement with United Nurses of Alberta. So that's something that we continue to work alongside the unions and United Nurses of Alberta. And so that could change uh, over, over time, but for now, that's what the base salary rate is. Shift differential means when you work an evening shift or a night shift or a weekend shift, there is an additional premium on top of that base salary rate. So you can see quickly that working a night on a weekend would, you would gain $8.25 on top of your base salary rate per hour. So that adds up really quickly. And then there's also overtime pay for nurses. So if you are granted overtime rate of pay, that's two times your basic uh, base salary rate of 3686. So there's so many things to consider when you're thinking about compensation as a registered nurse and what that might look like for you. And the next slide. So now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Sarah, who's just going to give you a really good tip about if you're uh, thinking about preparing for uh, an opportunity with Alberta Health Services. And I'll hand it off to you, Sarah. Hi, guys. Um, quick introduction. I'm Sarah McDonald. I am the Senior Advisor for Student Engagement and Youth Career Development. So my focus is really broad in terms of how do we help our youth become a part of our organization, whether it be today, in two years, in five years. So a lot of the work I do is helping to educate young people about the opportunities and what it looks like to work in healthcare on a much broader level. Tammy is more nursing focus and I get the pleasure of learning about everybody. <laughs> um, so what Tammy's got up on the screen here is a little bit about our interview tips. And one of the tips that I like to share with people is when you start to think about interviewing or you're getting to that point where uh, you're putting in those job applications, sit down with that friend 
the one who will tell you that you've got spinach in your teeth or that your hair looks bad that day. That's the person who's going to be honest with you about how you're coming across and presenting yourself. Because in an interview, it is one of the most narcissistic processes that we're going to ask you to go through. We're going to ask you to sell yourself. So what makes you unique? What makes you special? Why should we pick you? And so when I hear the stories from uh, Brianna and the other nursing students that are here today, they're there are so many things that make you special when you have a degree in Spanish. That's what sets you apart. Those are the opportunities when you have that those first interviews is how do I convey who I am to this person in a short period of time? And the other thing is we want you to understand that we are looking for whole answers in our questions. So that's why we've got what we utilize here as, as our best practice is the STAR technique. And where we talk, we want you to really kind of give us that broad response. And, you know, when you're young, it's hard because you don't have as many experiences as the old ducks on the block like myself who have been here for 15 years. But, you know, there's still great opportunities that you'll get to draw from, from your practicums, your placements, your other jobs that you've had if you've been a lifeguard, you know, so many things. And when you do get to that interview, and you want to bring that confidence with you, be prepared to talk about the things that you felt like you did good, that you really walked out and you're like, nailed it, right? Self high five, because those are the confident responses that you get to convey to us. So it's, it is, like I said, it's an, it's a really narcissistic process. It's hard to learn how to interview. I've had the pleasure of sitting across from thousands of them. I still am not great at interviewing. It is a, it's a skill and you learn so many things with your education. We just want to hear about it. Sarah, did you just want to mention a little bit about job shadow? Because just preparing yes. and understanding for a rural nursing career, how do they prepare? So some of the great options that exist in Alberta Health Services when we're not in a pandemic <laughs> are things like job shadow, high school work experience, volunteering. Uh, right now, our job shadow placements or our job shadows are on hold. And that is simply because we have to focus more on what's coming in and out of our facilities. And I think most people are understandable and the use of PPE, et cetera. But when this is over and we've all got our vaccinations and that herd, that herd mentality is there, we're going to be opening those doors up again. So doing those job shadows with different types of nurses is going to give you an opportunity to learn about nursing because there is, you know, we're not all, not all nurses are siloed into one type of care. Like Tammy identified, we've got oncology, surgical, but there's home care, there's med surge, there's senior services, a whole bunch of different areas. And we cannot wait until we can do those job shadows again. Uh, nine, another tiny plug is that we are going to be having a, an Alberta Health Services Healthcare Career Week in July. So if you keep your eyes on our website in the student uh, this, on the external student side, it is going to be going out to the schools as well. But it's another great thing to put on to help you expose you to different careers. Um, there's volunteer services with Alberta Health Services, and that exists for all ages, even if you are in high school. Again, if you go to our external site and search volunteer services, you're going to come up with uh, the link, and there's volunteer services across the province. Thank you, Sarah. So there Thank you have you. it. Then you have lots of opportunity and really everything matters. Everything you do counts when it relates to your community engagement, support of people within your communities, and whether you're coaching or involved in a sports team, all of that collaborative working together, all of that builds skill sets that are very valuable in healthcare. So um, I think I'll leave it there, but thank you so much. And if you guys have any questions for us, we are more than happy to answer them as well. Thank you, Tammy and Sarah. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for some questions if anybody has any. Please feel free to just ask them in the chat and, and we'll read them out and get your answers. Maybe I'll, um, first of all, thank you guys all so much for your presentations. Um, the students, you guys are like, that was amazing. I love how all of you had different journeys. And um, I have to say like all of you, um, 
mentioned that you, you know, you loved working with vulnerable people and, and advocate advocacy for your patients and so forth. So just um, thank you so much for sharing all of that information with us. And, and for Tammy and, and Sarah, um, thank you for, you know, letting our students know that there is going to be opportunity for them, um, you know, if they decide to go in this direction. So um, I just wanted to, so we had a few students that asked some questions um, prior to the event. So maybe just to get some of the questions going here. Um, and I'll, I'll put this out to our three students. If you can each just answer um, really quickly here. What was the biggest challenge that you have faced um, in, in reference to getting um, to where you are at right now? That one is super easy for me, so I'll just jump in right away. Um, on top of all the coursework and now the pandemic on top of it, I think that mental wellness and self-care routines are super, super, super important. Um, I just found that in the last year or so um, that I've just been finding more balance and with that comes not as stressful situations like not as stressed about class and I think that actually per like reflects in my work as well that I do um just approaching things um not as relaxed as possible because I think like some stress is good which you'll probably find out in your class <laughs> physiology classes but yeah so that's one thing that I have to say is balance for sure yeah I'd have to agree um Working through this pandemic has obviously been a very unique challenge, I gotta say. I don't I didn't expect to be doing a nursing degree through a pandemic. Um, but besides that, I think one of the biggest challenges for me was developing self-confidence in my abilities in working in nursing. Um, there's a lot of responsibility in this job. You need to be very safe and careful and just the confidence to know, like, I, I know what I'm doing, I'm being safe and kind of going ahead with that. Um, for me, that was probably the biggest thing, but it, it comes together um, and yeah, it can be really rewarding. So it looks like we've got some questions coming in in chat. Um, the first one, I'm not sure, because it, it is, looks like it's directed to possibly Colleen. Um, can you study midwifery through the rural healthcare or rural health partnership? You know, we don't actually offer education opportunities, but that we definitely have communities that support um, midwives as well as midwife students. Midwif midwifery would be, I guess, the proper term. Um, the students that are doing their, their rural placements and so forth. Um, but I'm not sure if anyone from U of A is able to answer um, where students can look into, or maybe HS as well, um, to go that direction, to go that route? I'm going to have to either ask Linda Yule, the Director of Undergraduate Programs at the U of A, or uh, Tammy or Sarah to take this one, because I actually, I'm not sure where, where you would go to actually go that way. There have been midwifery programs in the past at Mount Royal University. You mm -hmm. can check there. There are some in British Columbia, some in Ontario. The University of Alberta doesn't have a midwifery program. And I can just add that uh, Alberta Health Services does hire midwives. Uh, midwives are typically a contracted service. So it's a little bit different um, relationship with the health organization, uh, but they're absolutely valued and important for the care of Albertans. Sarah, was there anything that you wanted to add to that? No, it's, uh, I think it's a unique up and coming area that's being recognized more and more in traditional healthcare as the value that they provide. Thank you everyone for that. Hopefully that answered the question. Um, this one I'll send out to the students. Um, what was the most memorable moment you've made in nursing? I have one for this one. Um, so my placement was, as I was saying on that unit with many specialties, um, a very large segment of the people that came in were um, labor and delivery patients, so women giving birth. And getting to share that moment with the new parents and just that whole experience, getting to see that and 
new babies being born. It's such a special moment. So I've got to say that's probably the most memorable for me. And it's kind of actually made me think that maybe I want to go into um, obstetrical nursing when I'm when I'm graduated. Thank you, Brianna. Um, the next question is, um, Lydia or Bailey, if you want to take it, what is the one thing you dislike most about nursing? And what is the one thing you like most about it? So kind of both ends of the spectrum there. Um, I would say um, what I like the most is just how, it's going to be two-way thing. Um, I like the most is that you have your foot anywhere and everywhere. Um, patients will ask you questions that will go from things like dealing with chaplains and like who they need to contact for spiritual care all the way to programs that offer um, treatments for opioid addictions all the way to something that deals with social work and then back to something to deal with their surgeon. It is so wild the amount of um, disciplines that you work with and all the family members that you meet. But at the same time, I also dislike that because it is sometimes a chaotic mess of disciplinary <laughs> things that you're dealing with. Um, I feel like as in, like in nursing, you're kind of like the middleman that you just shoot out a bunch of things and you're also intaking a bunch of things. Um, and I, I think it just deals with stress levels. Once you're like aware, you're like, oh, these are all my responsibilities. These are all the people that I have to um, deal with and help. And they'll be doing the same thing to me. It starts to be really fun learning. It's like, oh, this person is a head and nose doctor and it's from this thing. And they're going to tell me this specific thing that I never thought I'd know. Or this person actually is from um, the First Nation community and they work in the spiritual side. And this is something cool we're going to be learning today. It's actually quite interesting how much you can learn. Amazing. Thank you, Lydia. Um, the next one I will direct towards Tammy and Sarah, if I can. Um, when looking for a job, do you look at the university that a student went to? And does going to a higher ranked school matter when you're looking at candidates? We like to look at Alberta students. That's really important to us. So if you're working or going to school in Alberta, we want to support you if you're moving towards a health career. So that's really important. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't look outside at other applicants that come forward out of other provinces, but we do like to support our Alberta graduates and our Alberta students. Um, sorry, what was the other part of that question? What else do we look at? Just it does, does going to a higher ranked school matter when you guys are looking at applicants? Well, we need to know that it's an accredited school and that the school is successfully meeting, the, the student is meeting the objectives set forth by that post-secondary education. That's really important to us, that we have a contract with that university or, or college, and we have a contract with Alberta or with the University of Alberta. So that means that we place the University of Alberta students within Alberta Health Services sites and facilities to support them during their practicum and those sorts of things. So all of those things matter to us. If you were applying to us um, and you identified your university, if it's known to us, that's always helpful because we know, we have an idea of what the, the students within those programs are learning and where they're at. We may have met you already during a practicum or during a job shadow or work experience. So that's always helpful to highlight as well, because if you've had any experience in the health system, whether it be Covenant Health, Alberta Health Services, or somewhere else in the province uh, that delivers a health service, that's really pertinent information for us to know as well. So coming on in with a little base foundation of highlighting everything that's relevant to that job that you just applied for is, is key and every resume is looked at individually. So, And also <laughs> to note uh, our collective agreement for the United, the UNA, United Nurses of Alberta collective agreement does identify that we are to hire 80% out of every graduating class. So that basically says that every graduating class based on our collective agreement, 80% will be hired by AHS. So that's significant. 
That's good to know. Thank you. Um, the next question is asking when orientation week is. That's usually the first week of term. So whether it's going to be virtual like it was last year or whether we're going to have an in-person one yet, we're not sure. Um, but it will be the first week of term. That's when orientation week starts. Um, the next question is, how does the U of A program compare to other nursing programs in the province? Um, again, I can't really speak to other nursing programs just because I, I'm not part of their program. Um, what I can say is that with the intentional learning model that the U of A year uses, it just the students find it makes it a little bit easier for them to retain what they're learning, um, it, as opposed to taking a lecture in one term and then doing practicums in another term. They're actually doing it all within the same course. So it just, it, it, it allows the retention there a little bit more. Um, but that being said, other nursing programs, they're different. So it's not saying that we're better than them. We're just different than them. Um, we build on everything. So we're, we're not gonna throw you into something with no background. <laughs> that's, that's the big thing that, I know we get a lot of questions about that from students coming into us and they're just terrified of going into their final preceptorship because it's like, they think that they're not gonna have the knowledge. So we, we built, we, we definitely prepare you for what you're going to be facing when you get out and into um, the, the working world as a nurse. Um, I guess I can ask the students, do you have anything about our program that you'd like to talk about or things that you, found helpful with our program? Um, I'm not sure what the other two, but my preceptorship was in um, high level and there was U of C students and other students from like GPRC and stuff like that. Every school has a different model. It seemed like everyone came in with a different background, but we all take around the same courses. Like you, there's not gonna be a student that you're gonna meet that didn't take a farm course or that didn't take a specific, um, thing like um, fundamentals like we all learn the basics but I do agree with Corrine because we worked with McEwen students as well and they would have a whole row of clinical time while we would be in classes and also have clinicals and it's based on how you learn I learn better when I have more my learning closer together while some students love the fact that they would roll through all their classes and then wouldn't have to touch a book and just be doing clinicals. It's different for everyone. Perfect, thank you, Lydia. Um, the next question and, is- And sorry, I'll just, said? sorry. And just a couple on that, Alberta Health Services, we also have what's called the transitional grad nurse. And so there are some opportunities that exist in some of our rural communities where we have a transitional grad nurse mentorship positions that come up. So they are specifically designed uh, over nine months, right, Tammy? It's a nine month. Um, actually, 12 weeks. Additional, 12 weeks. Sorry. Yeah, 12 weeks. Yeah. And so it is to help guide our recent graduates into that comfort level that that they were speaking to. So it doesn't exist everywhere, but there are most of those come up in the rules. So another great opportunity in the rules where you get to feel supported and transitioning from that student to practicing role. Thank you, Sarah. Maybe I'll, I'll jump in as well, just to talk about uh, some of the distinctives of the University of Alberta Faculty of Nursing. One is the range of programs that we have in our undergraduate programs. So you've heard about the collaborative program, the bilingual program, the after degree program. And we have a program for those who are already registered psychiatric nurses to become, or to have a degree in nursing. But we also have um, uh, a program called an honors program for students who have research interests and maybe want to go to graduate school sooner than later. It's like an apprenticeship in, in research. Uh, our uh, in terms of progression of programs, uh, once you have a, an undergraduate degree in nursing, we also have a graduate program with a master's program and a PhD program. So there's a, a whole uh, series or uh, leveling, if you will, of, of opportunities uh, for um, advanced education in nursing as well. And we're very proud of our faculty who are leaders in research and in education and in nursing practice. And so they've made huge contributions. You hear them on the news fairly regularly. And uh, so we have some really uh, um, high flying uh, faculty. And, and when you look at some of the textbooks that our nursing students have, many of them are authored by uh, University of Alberta faculty. So that's another kind of distinctive feature that we're proud of. 
Thank you, Linda. Um, the next question we got, I'm going to have to send on because I don't know it. Um, does anyone have any knowledge about getting into forensic nursing? That's a specialty after uh, having a, a basic degree in nursing. And I'm not sure exactly where the programs are. I know there are some in the, in the US. I'm not sure that there are any in Canada. So we'd have to scout around a bit. <laughs> don't know if Karna would, would maybe have some information about that. Thank you, Linda. Um, the next question is um, wondering if they can get some more recommendations for what courses to take in college university that would benefit towards nursing. Um, they indicated they're currently enrolled in open studies. For admission purposes, there are no additional courses short of what I outlined in, in the presentation here. That's really what we look for. Um, anything above and beyond, it's, it's not like it's more helpful to get you into the program. Um, however, I'm, I'm sure taking those courses could be beneficial to you when you are out nursing. Um, I'm sure there are courses that if you take will give you a little bit more of a background and, and benefit you in your nursing courses. Um, I, I'd like to open that up to the students to see if there's any courses that they took where they think may have been helpful to them to have and then to open it up to Tammy and Sarah to see if there are courses that they know that students have, you know, if they come into the nursing profession that having that extra to their degree um, would be beneficial to them. I did mention this earlier that um... So in my arts degree, I didn't take any of those physiology classes, stats, uh, what else was in there? Psych, medical microbiology. I did all of those when I was in open studies as well. And I think that kind of worked out to my benefit because um, I don't know if anyone mentioned this from the faculty, faculty, but I think if you do decide to go into the after degree, you need specific prerequisites. Um, but on top of that, they take into consideration your last, is it 60 credits or, or 30 credits? If anyone wants to pop in, I think it's 30 now. 24 without what? splitting a term. So yeah, it's, it's okay. pretty much, if you do full-time, it's 30. Yeah. yeah, so not that I was a terrible student when I was in arts, but I was definitely motivated when I was in open studies. So those classes that I took that are towards the nursing program I did well in because I was motivated and they, because I was motivated, I would, I feel like they definitely helped me when we started the um, like pharmacology and physiology in nursing as well. So sometimes when we look at, um, it's not so much a class or a course, but you may have heard in rural Alberta about dual credit healthcare aid program. So students that determined to take a healthcare aid certification or anything relatable to health delivery uh, as a foundational knowledge and skill to really identify if that's something that they want to continue on with. We do know that students that have obtained their certification while still in high school to become uh, healthcare aides or delivering personal care um, in a health environment have really identified their passion and their drive and desire to keep going. So I think for rural students, you may have those types of programs in your school already. And um, maybe it's something you want to check into as well if it works with your schedule. The important part is that you stay on track to graduate. So um, we want we don't want you know other things to negatively impact your your uh, graduation uh, course grades and, and things moving forward. But it's a wonderful program and it really does seem to help um, students identify where their intrinsic passion is. Thank you, Tammy. Um, the next question is a great question, a very timely question. Um, to get into nursing, will you need to have the COVID vaccine? Um, Linda, do you wanna take that one? Do you know if we have a policy sure. on that yet? Yeah. Or? No, that's fine. Um, no, uh, the, the answer is not unless that's a requirement of the clinical agencies where you're, you're doing some of your clinical experience. So if Alberta Health Services or Covenant Health or Continuing Care Center or whatever requires their staff and those looking after their patients to have, have the COVID vaccine, then our students would need to have it. We strongly recommend it, but it is, uh, unless it becomes uh, a requirement in the in the clinical setting or if government mandates, which they haven't and probably don't intend to, then uh, it's not mandatory, but it is strongly encouraged. And what we've said is if you are in a, 
uh, a clinical setting uh, is throughout the program and the patient care unit where you're, uh, where you're working uh, has an outbreak. And they say that only staff and students who've been immunized can be on the unit and you haven't been, then you may lose some of your, your clinical learning time and that may, may put you a bit behind. And we found that with flu immunization and other things in the past. Uh, so it, it's something you have to consider in terms of, of your options uh, in looking at the, the, the potential for uh, needing, needing it right then or being able to, to manage without it. I just would like to add on to what Linda's sharing, and that's really something that's very, very important to the health organization is the health of the employees. Because without the health of the employees, you're not available to care for the health of Albertans. So I know the students have mentioned it too from a personal level, just the importance of health and wellness and life balance and good habits, good, good health habits. Um, very important and, you know, immunization and those sorts of things play into that um, optimal health when you're serving a population in need. Thank you. Um, the next question I'll leave to the students if they want to <laughs> choose. What was your most uncomfortable or disturbing experience as a nurse? Oh, I'll keep it light. I've had a couple of them, but I consider myself as a uh, like strong stomached. <laughs> and um, I actually, when I was in labor and delivery, I saw a C-section and I almost, almost passed out. Um, but it just, it's just, I walked out of that delivery room or the operating room and I was like at the first thing I did was call my mom because I was like you give birth to two children and it was it was uh, it was interesting it definitely made me more intrigued about labor and delivery just because basically biologically all women are made for childbirth so I just yeah it's just weird weird situation so anyways, I think that it's important to understand that if you are queasy, that you're not alone at all. Like everyone has something that sets them off. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tell Thank you Bailey, for that. A, sorry, I was just going to tell Bailey a secret because my background is OR nursing for many years in rural and cesarean sections, of course, often bring students in and the dads. So we're often keeping one eye on whoever else is in that environment beyond what we're doing as our role at that time. We're always keeping an eye on those dads and those students. And often you see us slide chairs in just to have them have a seat and get comfortable and just ensure that we don't have another patient on our hands while we're dealing with mama. Thank you for that. Um... The next question is about the CASPER test. Um, it just says, can you tell us more about the CASPER test? So um, the CASPER test is a situational judgment test. The word test tends to cause panic in students. It's not meant to do that. It's not a test you can study for. Um, it's not right or wrong answers per se. What it does is it tests how you react in situations. So do you use um, compassion when you're making decisions? Do you just use pure logic? You know, kind of, it, it just, there's certain, criteria, or not criteria, but traits that we know make great nurses. Um, to be honest, most students that are thinking of coming into nursing already have those traits. So the CASPER test, very few students don't make it through. Uh, okay, so I just I have to I have to clear that up. It, it's not something that's scary. It's, it's a threshold that once you meet it, um, it, it goes through. And like I said, it, it's very few students that don't meet the threshold. Most students who are thinking about a career in um, nursing or, or healthcare of some sort, if they're writing the CASPER test, they probably already think with those traits. So it, it does come out in the test. Um, there are practice questions. So if you go onto our website, there's a section called the CASPER test. Um, and there is a practice test you can take on that. So if you're really concerned about it, go in and do the practice test. That's, that's the biggest thing I can say, just to calm your nerves so that you're not quite as scared of it. Um, but yeah, most students that have taken it that I, I've talked to before they take it that were really, really apprehensive about it after they take it, they're like, that wasn't that bad. So just, just keep calm. It's, it's not that scary, I promise. Um, 
The next question, do rural applicants have a specific amount of seats reserved in the program? Um, I don't believe so, but Linda, you might know better than I do no, if we have no, that. Are, we don't have any allocation of seats. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, at Red Deer College, Grand Prairie College and Keanu College, um, they have the seats in their college programs uh, that they fill with, with, with students. And those are part of our collaborative uh, degree program. So uh, there's that number of seats available specifically in a rural kind of setting or a more rural kind of setting, but we don't have any designated seats in Edmonton. Thank you, Linda. Um, the next question for the students. Um, what did your grades look like finishing high school and what courses did you take during? Um, for me, like with that, I was in the year that um, I think Kareen was talking about, the 2018 with that 73%, that was my year. Um, my grades were around that average that um, Kareen was mentioning. Um, and I, um, took a bunch of courses. I was in um, physics um, to 30 dash, um, to physics 30, um, bio 30, chem 30, um, English 30 dash one, um, and then social 30 dash one and band um, 30 and also um, AP math. I did as many courses as I could and I feel like that's the best way to go because they do give you options on applications to choose which one is of your best mark. So maybe you did a great job in bio, but you're, you weren't doing so hot in chem, you could switch in um, one of your social studies marks. Like there's an ability to switch in those things. I feel like shooting your net wide, studying your best in all of them, you're able to choose the best of the ones that you've taken and actually present yourself as a well-rounded student in those courses. Thank you, Lydia. Um, there's another question on here about does taking a year off affect your uh, ability to get accepted into the program? The answer to that is absolutely not. Um, we have students that'll take a couple years off. If, if that's what you need to do to figure out where you wanna be going, um, that's absolutely fine. We're looking at grades. It, it's not, you know, did you come straight from high school? We have the after degree program too. So we have students that complete full degrees before they come to us. So yeah, if you take a year off, if you finish a degree, there, there's there's no detriment to doing that and, and we're happy whenever you're ready to come to us. Um, and then I see that Sarah wanted to talk a little bit about student loan forgiveness. I will turn it over to Sarah so she can talk about that really quick. Yeah, I just wanted to let remind everybody that, you know, you're young and being in high school, you're gonna start. And Bailey talked a little bit about the expenses that are attached to school. And uh, I was in a similar situation. I went to school, my parents said they'd pay for my first degree and then my second one was on my own. And when I was, uh, I was an, an athlete in university. So I did get several um, ac athletic scholarships and not a lot of academic ones. Uh, but that's because I had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, when we talk about that university experience, it was wonderful. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. But uh, one thing that you collect sometimes is loans and debt. And so one of the perks of nursing is there's the student loan forgiveness program. And that is actually through the government of Canada. So I would highly recommend that if you are interested in rural nursing because that Canada Student Loan Forgiveness Program for the nursing is attached to you going and working in rural sites. And the base, I, I believe I checked a few years ago and so I'm not sure if this still holds true, but Calgary, Edmonton and Lethbridge, Red Deer, so the big seven were considered. So Medicine Hat, Red Deer, Calgary, Lethbridge, Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray and it, oh, there was maybe another city. Oh, um, Tabor, I think it is. Tabor, the one that's super close to Lethbridge. I'm in the South, I should know this better. Uh, Tabor has an excellent bakery. That's, that's the one that has a really good bakery. Uh, but it also doesn't count. But all of the other rural sites, there's a significant amount of student loan forgiveness. So if you are, you know, if you 
thinking about nursing and you qualify for student loans when you're done, another consideration about rural is if you go rural, the chances that you're going to have a significant amount of your loan forgiveness if it's still, if the program's still around in four years, um, but it's been around for, uh, like I said, yeah, I've been here 15 years (laughs) and I want to say it's been around at least my entire lifespan (laughs) at Palliser slash Alberta Health Services. So it's just another consideration. So, you know, you look at the Northern Living Allowance with Alberta Health Services, you look at the perks of being in rural and the ability to work closely with your patients, get to know them, have that more uh, well-rounded care. And then you, student loan forgiveness, there's a lot of opportunity for you to come out a little bit on the, on the better end of the finances of everything. I know personally, I... I did not, but I think it's because I chose to spend my money in very poor ways while I was at university. But again, no regrets. <laughs> um, but I can throw the link in the chat box if anybody wanted to know. You know, again, future reference, but it's good to know. That is definitely good information to have. Thank you, Sarah. And um, there's one last question I want to take just before we head out. Um, how many applicants are accepted into the collaborative program during the admission cycle? And when do application results typically go out for students applying from high school? Um, so applications open um, for any given intake year, the October prior to that. So for the fall 2021 applicant cycle, the the applications would have opened on October 1st and closed on March 1st. Um, the fall 2022 intake will open again on October 1st and will go likely until March. Um, we start getting applications sent to our office um, in the new year once all the documents have come in and we can start actually making admission decisions. So an application or an admission decision can come out any time between January to right before school starts, just depending on when we get the application sent from the registrar's office, when we get final documents, things like that. Um, and the numbers, I know that we're sort of changing them a little bit from what I remember. So, Linda, do you know what we're accepting for the next couple of years? It's around 220 in the collaborative program, around 120 in the after degree program, 24 in the bilingual program. Perfect. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so I think um, we got through all of the questions. So I'm just gonna put up our email address. So if we didn't get to your question or you have further questions when you get out of here, um, please don't hesitate to send us an email. So it's n-u-u-n-g-r-a-d at ualberta.ca and that will come to our office and any questions you have about our program, we're happy to answer those for you. Um, Again, I'd like to say thank you all for coming today. It's really good to see so many people interested in um, careers in nursing. That's it's amazing to see. Um, Thank you to Colleen for organizing all of this. Thank you to Tammy and to Sarah for stepping in and presenting on this. Um, Thank you to Brianna, Bailey, and Lydia for giving their take on what it was like for them as a student. That that was actually really eye-opening for me to hear too, so I'm, I'm really glad I was able to hear that. And thank you, Linda, for being here to answer the questions I wasn't able to. Yes, a big thank you to everyone who helped make this happen. I'll be sending out an email with the survey and then please watch your emails in the coming weeks. I will be sending you uh, uh, the copy of the PowerPoint presentation that Corrine did up as well as all the information um, that was kind of brought up if you know there was links or, or so forth um, that can help you guys as, as you start making decisions moving forward. I'll include that in, in that email. So that'll probably come in the next week or two to as long as and as well as a recording of this event um, which you can share with your friends you can share with your teachers as well and um, any other information that may be helpful so thank you guys so much for joining us tonight we so appreciate it and happy Alberta Rural Health Week <laughs>